Hi there. Welcome to another video in my series on working with partial fractions. And in this example, we've got to express 2x minus 1 all divided by 2x minus 5 times x minus 1 times x plus 2 in partial fractions. Now I'm assuming that you've been watching previous videos in this series where I've shown you how to break a fraction like this up into partial fractions. The problem is I've not shown you how to work out the constants. And in this example, the constants are going to be slightly different to what we've had in earlier examples. Well, first of all, then, we've got our fraction. We've got three linear factors here. So we should be familiar then with the fact that what we're going to get is a constant over each of the linear factors. So the first constant we'll call a, and it'll be over 2x minus 5. And to this, we add another constant, let's say b, divided by the linear factor x minus 1, and then another constant, which we'll call c, and that's divided by x plus 2. So we've got our partial fractions. What we need to be able to do now is just work out these constants a, b, and c. And to do that, we always multiply by the denominator here to both sides. So multiplying the left-hand side with the denominator here just gives us 2x minus 1. So we're therefore going to have 2x minus 1. And that's going to be identical to multiplying this first fraction with the denominator. The 2x minus 5s will cancel. And we'll just be left with a times the x minus 1 times the x plus 2. When we move on to this fraction here, multiplying this fraction with this denominator, the x minus 1s will cancel, just leaving me with b times the 2x minus 5 and times the x plus 2. And when it comes to the last fraction here, when we multiply that with the denominator, the x plus 2 cancels. So we're just left with plus c times 2x minus 5 times x minus 1. Now, what we need to do is try and make these brackets, these factors, if you like, equal to 0 by choosing appropriate values of x. Well, we can make this bracket 0 by choosing x to be 1. So we start off then with when x equals 1. And when x equals 1, 2x minus 1 is going to be 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1. So we've therefore got 1 equals. Notice it's an equals now because we're dealing with an equation as opposed to an identity. So when x is 1, this bracket will be 0. So that takes out that term. This term won't be 0, though. We'll have b multiplied with 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 5. So that's going to be minus 3. And then this bracket will be 1 plus 2, so that's going to be 3. So we've got 1 equals minus 9b. And if I divide both sides by minus 9, we end up with b equaling minus 1 ninth. So that's one of the constants then. Let's see if we can work out another constant. This time, Let's say we make this bracket x plus 2 equal to 0. So therefore, x would have to equal minus 2. So we say when x equals minus 2, substitute this into the values on the left-hand side here. We get 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. Minus another 1 gives us minus 5. So therefore, minus 5 equals... This bracket is 0, so all of this term here will be 0. Put minus 2 in here, this bracket will be 0, so that means all of this will be 0. And then for this last term, we're going to have c times 2 times minus 2, so that's minus 4, minus another 5, so that's going to be minus 9. And that's going to be multiplied with minus 2 minus 1, so that's going to be minus 3. 
So you've got minus 5 equals 27c. So if you divide both sides by 27, you end up with c equaling minus 5 twenty-sevenths. Lastly then, we've worked out b and c, so we now need to work out what a is. And to work out what a is, we just need to make this factor here, 2x minus 5 equal to 0. So if 2x minus 5 equals 0, 2x would equal 5. Divide then by 2 and you end up with x equaling 5 over 2 or 2 and a half. So we'll say when x equals 5 over 2, it's easier to work with 5 over 2 than 2 and a half. So therefore, substituting 5 over 2 into here, 2 times 5 over 2 is 5. 5 minus 1 is going to give us 4. So therefore we've got 4 equals. And we're going to have a multiplied with 5 over 2, 2 and a half, minus 1 in other words. That's going to be 1 and a half or 3 over 2. And that's being multiplied with 5 over 2, 2 and a half, plus another 2. So it's going to be 4 and a half or 9 over 2. So what we've got here then is 4 equals 27a over 4. So if I multiply by 4, we're therefore going to have 16 equals 27a. And so therefore, if I divide both sides by 27, you can see that a must be equal to 16 over 27. 16 27. So we just need to summarize now. So therefore, what we've got here, we'll just copy this fraction down. We've got 2x minus 1 then, and this is all divided by the linear factors. 2x minus 5 multiplied with x minus 1 multiplied with x plus 2. Now, what we've got is a is a positive value. So I'm going to start with that one. We've got 16 over 27 here. Horrible fraction. OK, so what we'll do is we'll just put it in as 16 over 27. And all of this is divided by 2x minus 5. Doesn't look very nice, does it? Well, we'll have a look at simplifying this in a moment. Now for the next term, I can see that b is a negative value, so we'll just put minus here, and it's 1 ninth, so we're going to have 1 ninth then, all divided by x minus 1. Again, not a nice fraction. For c, c is a negative value, so we're going to have negative there, and it'll be 5 over 27, 5 27 and all of this will be over x plus 2. Now, although this is correct, it's not really good to leave it like this. So what we do in cases like this one, for instance, is we remove the 27 by multiplying top and bottom of the fraction by 27. It's like what you're multiplying by 1, so it's not going to affect the value, but it's going to affect the appearance of it. So if you multiply the top here, 16 27 by 27, you're just going to be left with 16. But if we multiply the bottom by 27, then you just get 27 multiplied with the 2x minus 5. And that looks a lot better than this. Similarly, for this fraction here, we're going to multiply top and bottom by the 9. So we'll end up with 1 in the top, and then this will be divided by 9 times x minus 1. And for the last fraction, multiply top and bottom by the 27. And that's going to give me minus 5, all divided by 27 times x plus 2. And that's the way that we would leave it. Now with practice, you most probably will want to avoid this step here. When you get constants like these, you should find yourself going straight to this line. Anyway, I hope that's given you some idea then how we can go about handling fractions that have got 
three linear factors in the denominator. It's not really much different to what we did earlier when we handled just two linear factors. But the point that I wanted to make in this video was how we handle constants which are fractions in themselves. Okay, so hope that's been clear. And uh, in the next video that follows, I've given you a question that you might like to try, very similar to this kind of one.